Hare Krishna. Welcome back to our study of the Yoga Sutras. So in the previous many sutras, we have seen Patanjali's recommendations of how to overcome the Chitta Vikshepas, the mental disturbance, and come to a more peaceful state of mind. So what happens to the yogi after they become mentally peaceful? That is something that is going to be uh, highlighted in today's sutras and in the subsequent sections. So let us see what happens in sutra number 40. This is how the sutra goes. Paramanu parama mahatvanto asya vashikaraha. So what does it say? Parama anu. So parama supremely anu. Anu means very infinitesimal. So from the smallest of the smallest to the parama mahat. Mahat means extremely great. To the supremely great. Antaha. So in that entire range from the infinitesimal to the infinite. Asyaha, the yogi, has vashikara, has mastery, which means their sense of perception ranges from the smallest of the smallest to the greatest of the greatest. This is how the translation goes. Gradually, one's mastery in concentration extends from the infinitesimal to the infinite. Now, what does this mean? Is it that uh, are we not seeing things properly right now? W what is so special about their range extending from the infinite decimal to the infinite? Does it mean they start seeing atoms and molecules everywhere or just sitting here? You know, they are able to see the planets and the galaxies uh, in the outer space. What does it mean uh, to extend one's mastery? So to understand this, we need to understand the Vedic perception of reality. Now, unlike the modern scientific understanding that many of us are used to, the Vedic perspective of reality is a multi-level reality. By multi-level, I mean there are there's a physical, metaphysical, and there's a spiritual levels of reality. And all three are sandwiched together. By physical reality is what we today understand by our senses, what much of modern science talks about. That is a physical level of reality. But beyond that, there are certain cosmic energies, certain cosmic uh, personalities like the devatas who are operating at that metaphysical level, ensuring the smooth flow of operations at a physical level. So that level of reality is also true. And of course, beyond that is a spiritual level of reality where the directly the Supreme Lord's energies are operating. That is the spiritual level of reality. Now, all three are operating together. So just to give you a, a more relatable example to this, right? When a person goes through disease, right? How each of these levels of realities can be understood. At a physical level, one will say, okay, there's a virus, there's some bacteria. There, this is the reason for the disease in that particular person. But at a metaphysical level, one will see that, look, if the disease is indeed, if the bacteria or the virus is indeed the cause of the problem, then why is it that the bacteria manifested at this particular point? Or why is it that if the bacteria or virus is everywhere, why everyone is not getting affected? So which means there is some other factor that we need to take into account. And that there is a metaphysical level of reality, which here includes, it could be that particular individual's uh, you know, state, you know, a metaphysical doctor would not diagnose just the virus would rather see, okay, what is a planetary alignment of the, you know, of, of that particular person, you know, what is the astrological state of that particular person, uh, you know, and so on. They will get into more deeper factors, right? Now, what does this mean? What is astrology and what does this planetary alignment, what, what, how is it connected to devatas? We understand that each of the devatas are controlling these planetary movements, but how does it affect? It affects the human mind. It affects the psychology of the person and, you know, our psychology defines our life. So that way, uh, through that kind of a metaphysical connection by affecting our mind and our state of uh, psychology, it affects our physical level of reality also. So that is how it is connected. But even beyond that, a spiritual doctor would analyze the problem that, you know, actually there is a high level of tamas, that, that guna, the, the, the mode of ignorance where the soul's consciousness is right now being very strongly influenced by the mode of ignorance. And that is the reason why the person is prone to sickness and therefore got affected right now. So you see how the same problem 
has been seen in three different perspectives according to the level at which one is operating. Now, it is not that when you are operating at a physical level, you discard the spiritual or vice versa. The Vedic understanding is these levels of reality are not independent of each other, but rather they are all uh, integrated together. So this kind of a holistic vision was what was there in the, in the traditional Vedic practitioners. right? But then not everybody could see all these levels of reality. For that, that is where this particular sutra comes into significance. For a person who has achieved that high level of, of uh, chitta prasada, where mind is relatively peaceful, the chitta is peaceful, then one will be able to start intuitively seeing these things. Right now, this is uh, another understanding. It is not some kind of an intellectual, rational uh, rationalization. It is not that okay, I observe something and you know I just start the uh, you know make some calculations and try to figure things out. Right, that is the the more uh, conventional approach. But at this stage, the yogi uh, these understandings are revealed to to that person intuitively. And that is what makes it so special. It is not that the yogi masters the astrology science or the yogi masters uh, under, you know, doing analysis based on the guna symptoms. Uh, it is not exactly like that. But these understandings become intuitively revealed to such a yogi. right? And that is the speciality of, of the person. So this uh, intuitive revelation is what that happens when the mind becomes extremely free and calm from... Uh, these chitta vrittis, right? So how does it exactly happen? How is it that things are are uh, revealed? You know that whole wide range which right now uh, we are blinded to that level of reality. How is it that they are revealed? What is the state of the mind that facilitates such kind of intuitive revelation? Is very nicely described in the next sutra, right? What does uh, uh, Patanjali say here? He says, "Krina vritte rabi seva maner." What does it say? Long sutra here. He says, Kshina. Kshina means to, to weaken, to lose its strength. Uh, Kshina vritter. So the vrittis, the chitta vrittis have lost their strength, meaning that now they have dampened. They have almost subsided. Right? Then what happens? Uh, and abhijatasya, the, the mind, the chitta, comes to its natural state of purity. Just like Eva, a money. Money here means a crystal. Any kind of a very transparent uh, object, you know. So then, because what is speciality of a transparent object? If, if you have, uh, if you have, say, for example, uh, some, if you're looking at sunlight, if you're looking at sunlight through a colored crystal, you will see the sunlight now according to that particular color of that crystal. But when you have a transparent crystal, what happens? You will notice things as they are without any distortions, right? So this is the uh, idea being uh, mentioned here that the mind right now, uh, it looks at the world based on these various filters that we put. Right? This concept of filters, it's, it's not some invention of the social media, but rather it is our own mind which operates. Every time I look at this world, we are not looking things as they are, but rather how they mean to us. You know, Just like a sweet. A sweet could be an object of pleasure to someone who enjoys sweets, but somebody who is diabetic, that sweet will be seen as an object of fear or even hate. Right? So the mind puts up all these filters. We are never observing reality, but we are only observing things by layering them with our reality. So when do I see things real? When the mind becomes extremely calm, when it is free from, in the absence of these chitta vrittis or these mental filters, that is when one perceives things as they are. And what are we perceiving? Right In any interaction, there are these three things, grahitir, grahana, and grahiyashu, meaning there is, uh, you know, the, the the subject, object, and the process of interaction. If you if you remember, you know, and at this point, uh, I will request you to go back and revisit Sutra number seventeen, which is going to be highlighted again in the next section in the following sutras. 
we're going to revisit that concept. If you remember, we discussed about this Vitarka Vichara Ananda Asmita with the example of I am meditating on a rose and then I am experiencing a rose. We saw the, the uh, a verbal understanding of the, of the involution process there, but that concept is going to revisit. So there, when you are saying I am meditating on a rose, there is the subject, I, the object, the rose, and meditating, the interaction, the process. So in all these three levels, we put our filters in our day-to-day -day life and are not able to see things properly. But when we enter into that state, when the mind is completely peaceful and Patanjali calls that state as Samapatti, in that particular state, we will be able to perceive things as they are without any tinges. And when I say as they are, it is at a more deeper, deeper level of reality, not just seeing a wall as a wall, but even looking beyond its material state, you know, understanding that, oh, this wall also is comprised of some fundamental energies of this, uh, of this universe. One learns to see things, you know, even this understanding of a wall actually is, a, is an acquired filter that since our childhood, we've been growing up and said, you know, this kind of a structure is called as a wall, but no, one starts to see things even beyond those uh, superimposed uh, notions. This is a concept that we'll elaborate a lot in, in, the, in the future sutras. But an important point that I would like all of you to notice, this word samapatti. Samapatti is that state of uh, complete absorption, right? Now, it is different from samadhi, uh, more from a technical perspective, because while samadhi is the stage that we are trying to reach, you know, there are these different angas from yama, niyama, and the stage in which the yogi enters, samapatti is the, the state of the chitta, which facilitates one's entrance into the stage of samadhi, you know, so just like how being a, a, a sincere, studious person will facilitate you to one day get your degree in education. So sincerity and studiousness, if that is the state of the student, then the goal, the stage that they will reach is they will pass the exam with flying colors, they'll get their certificate and they'll be called as so-and-so degree owner, you know, holder like that. So that is a subtle difference between the Samapatti and Samadhi. So this is a concept that Patanjali is going to elaborate further in the future sutras and things are going to get very interesting. Now Patanjali is going to very systematically dissect this whole progression. Now that one has entered into, gone past that dhyan, entered into that state of samadhi, there's a whole spectrum within that samadhi. How the yogi enters into that perfected state of nirbija samadhi by using the samapatti uh, state. How does one go deeper and deeper? How does one involute? That is a science which is very beautifully going to be highlighted in the future sutras. So please do join us for our future sessions. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna.